tent. Okay, let's examine the most critical parts of this technique. Please watch my hips and my feet very carefully. You can see that I have blocked his elbow with my free hand. If I let go, he can hit me like this. But if I block his elbow, he has no chance to strike, and I can throw him down. There are two variations to this kokyu nage. One hand grab and two hand grab. If when you're grabbed by one hand, the technique starts by turning the fingers of the grabbed hand inwards towards yourself. Okay? The fingertips move inward. Do you understand? You can't do it like this by raising your hand upwards. He can easily resist. But if you move in closer, he can resist, but you can get past it. Now, it's a different matter though when he grabs you with two hands. Now you can't turn your fingertips inward, no matter how hard you try. So in this case, you lift your hand upwards, as if raising a sword to strike. And in doing so, you take his strength away without any problem. So when he grabs with two hands like this, I raise my hand, enter and throw. It's no use to try the one-handed grab technique when he's grabbed you with two hands. It just won't work. So, this is the difference between the one and two hand grab variations of Kokyu Nage. When you're grabbed with one hand, you go like this. There are two ways. Okay, this time the shoulder. Two handed shoulder grab from the rear. First of all, make a circle with your arms. Then step slightly to the side and backwards with your foot and turn. Okay, make the circle. Here we go. Make a circle. Just turn and draw him to you for the throw. Here's another variation. This time step forward. Forward, then turn. Draw him forward and throw. Do you see that I'm stepping forward? What if you both have swords? If you both swing straight ahead, you both are hit. Okay, we'll go slowly. A straight, accurate strike. Again, strike with the breath that unifies heaven and earth. We both swing, but I draw him in. I suck in his energy. We're not on guard. Usually fencing starts with on guard. He can't move his sword. He can't move his sword or raise it for a blow. If he lifts his sword, I enter. He swings it down and I've moved. Let him swing straight down, look what happens. The point is we're moving together. There's an old saying about a small bird tapping on a stone. Many people practicing with bamboo swords move the sword point up and down or tap them together as a preliminary to a real attack. They wouldn't do this with real swords. Their opponent would be able to gauge their breath and thus their timing if they did so. You shouldn't slap their swords together. Your sword, your attack should be silent. If he comes forward to hit, he is cut. There's no noise of clashing swords. He can't lift up his sword to strike. If he thinks to cut me, he himself will be cut. So in Aikido, we're trying to teach that he shouldn't take up the sword against me. 
You must take the lead. You must grab your opponent's intentions before he actually moves to attack. Look. Okay, he's going to come strike me. But I enter and he's helpless. Let's turn around so you can see this better. He can't pull back or raise his sword. He's helpless. I've captured him with one finger. He can't stab, he can't strike, he can't draw back. This is attractive power. This is like magnetic attraction. Just like this, one finger. Coming at, with me a sword, coming at me with a sword is useless. As I said earlier, if you look at your opponent's eyes, he will steal your heart. If you stare at the point of the sword, it will steer your, steal your will or concentration. Never look at your opponent. If he wants to thrust at me, go right ahead. If he wants to strike, go right ahead. He can do whatever he wants. He can't hit me in any case. He can't hit me, he can't strike me, because I'm not looking at the sword. If I look, he will take my key. I never look. I never look. And he'll never touch me. He strikes and I'm not there anymore. He comes to strike and I'm just not there. Because I'm not there, I'm not hit. It's easy. He comes to strike. I'm not hit, but I get there first. If we stand here like this, strike at the heart. Okay, let's go. You see? He's struck and I'm not. Okay. The sword, the staff are inside me. They become part of me. He comes to strike and I help him along. He's stuck. Go ahead, strike. Strike again. Go ahead. Oop. August 1957, O-sensei presented to Hikizuji-sensei this scroll, signifying the innermost teachings of the bow, marking his complete mastery of the long staff. This is called Yaribusema, or a thicket of spears. The ninja of old used to practice escaping from this predicament. In Aikido, you must be able to read the opponent's key and thus grasp their intention in advance of the actual attack. This involves a speed much greater than the speed of light or electricity. This requires a speed that transcends space and time. The ability to instantaneously sense the flow of a situation and change accordingly. As such, it involves a spiritual transcendence of one's own limited self. O sensei called this Masakatsu Agatsu Katsuhayebi, true victory, self victory, the speed that transcends time and space. This is the mystery of Aikido, the central teaching. Study it well, practice until you understand this essential principle. When your heart is bright and full of love, the spirit of the kami can enter into you and fill your Aikido with a wonderful, life-giving power. That's what Aikido is about. So he comes. He comes. He thinks about hitting me. And I can tell what he's thinking. If I stand here, he hits me, of course. He thrusts to hit. 
He thinks to thrust, to hit. When he thinks, now I'll get him, at that moment, he's ruined. I can sense his attention, I can sense his key with my key. It's not a matter of being fast. It's not that at all. At that instant, with a speed that transcends time and space, I move. He thinks to hit me, and in that instant, he himself is hit. He thinks to kick me, and he himself is struck first. It's not as if he can grab my key. He can't grab my gi. He can't get hold of me. And now he can't stand up. With the spirit of my heart, I'm pinning him. He's held down, he can't get up. After everything is said and done, you have to train your spirit at the same time as you train your body. We practice the techniques of Aikido to cleanse our body and to cleanse our spirit. Aikido is a practice created to build personal character. In the larger sense, Aikido exists in order to build a world of peace and of harmony. That's what it's about. He thinks to hit me, and instead he himself is hit. Now he's held down. He can't get up. I'm not holding him with my hands, I'm just standing here. Come on out. Like this, and here we go. It's easy. He can't grab. He can't grab me. I'm just walking. He can't strike me. Hey, all right, so I let him grab me. I put my foot over his foot. Just this little bit here. Everything depends on the movement of your key. Cultivate your key. You have to purify your soul in the crucible of your own practice. Only then will you attain a fine, wonderful spirit. And this is the most central goal of Aikido. This is the most important point.
はい、皆さんありがとうございました。